stitch all the things welcome to my channel if you're new and if you're returning to come hang out with me a bit and see what my stitching stuff is up to this week thank you so much um, today is Monday March 4th and uh, this is the first in this week's vlog series um, I'm gonna try to stick straight to stitchy stuff this week I know I've kind of inundated uh, you guys with a lot of life stuff and for those of you who are like not a fan um, I'm gonna lighten up on you this week on Saturday uh, we had a travel day and so I worked on the caterpillar cross stitch um, stitch along uh, this is the bag Vicky stitch and button made for me um, I I always underestimate how much time this piece takes me, uh, but I, for about six and a half-ish hours, um, I, fin I stitched most of this towel, not all of it. Um, the last two rows of white, and there's a little fringe, and I know you really can't see it because of the light here. Uh, maybe if I take that off? Nah, still can't really see it. Uh, anyway, I got home, and I was gonna start right away on my Chatelaine, and changed my mind, and decided just finish this towel and finish the seashell and so that's what I did on Saturday evening finished it around 8 8 30 I think now there is a blue and white I'm assuming it's an ocean wave that runs across the width of this entire piece um, I was actually gonna consider this done um, when I finished the towel and the seashell but technically I can't because that wave that wave released with the first, um, the first clue in this stitch along. It's a mystery stitch along. So um, at some point this week, I'm actually gonna stitch that. It's a lot of stitching. Um, I have come to acknowledge that now. A lot of stitching, I keep underestimating the stitching on this piece. This whole area here is like one and a half by probably two and a half inches wide. I and mean, that's a lot of stitching. Um, so it's way bigger than my mind keeps thinking. The top, uh, the second clue is a, a sun and a little cloud and then a plane with a banner um, flying, you know, those banners at the beach. You know what I mean? Um, this says seize the day. So that's really cute. I'm going to get to that. And I'm thinking the, the other three travel days I have are probably going to be only this. Um, I really thought I might be able to get to my A Little Luck piece by Lizzie Kate, but I don't know if that's going to happen. And I really would like the money the credit to, um, for the finish but we'll see we'll see how far I get with that okay the other thing I did is work on my Chatelaine okay so my husband is working we've got a an issue with the hose bib outside so you're gonna hear back and forth and doors closing and stuff because everything echoes in this house it's a small house all right so the last that you saw on my Chatelaine I had stitched oops I had stitched the black all the way around the DMC 310 um, and there were like a couple rows in between the DMC 310 and the edge of, of the other stitching I had done. I'm going to put this up close. The camera kind of has a hard time focusing. We'll see if it does. Now, um, on Saturday night, I added right on the other side of that DMC, there's a row of Petite Treasure Braid in black gold. It's a beautiful color. And then right beyond that, on the inner side of the black gold, on the squared points, you can see every other stitch is in Petite Treasure Braid taupe. And on the diamond points here, these diamond points, every other stitch is Petite Treasure Braid. I'm sorry, these are Petite Treasure Braid. I, can't, I shouldn't say that. Petite Silk Lame Braid in uh, Mood Indigo. So Petite Silk Lame Treasure Braid, every other stitch here in taupe, and then on the corners, every other stitch in Mood Indigo. I'm gonna show you these colors. I always look around and it's always in my hand. Okay, taupe and Mood Indigo. And I'm you see the sparkle in that braid? This piece, when you look at it on camera, it doesn't look sparkly. 
in real life, no matter how you move this, if you just, just twist this just the tiniest bit, the hose bit, the whole thing sparkles. My husband loves seeing this. Okay, so then last night, uh, Sunday night, I started the beading. No, yes, but I also did the eyelets. Now the eyelets are in a petite silk lame braid in blue fog. It's a real light silvery color. As a matter of fact, it matches the walls of my room perfectly. Perfect. <laughs> he can't help it. He's a fixer. He knows I'm recording, but he has to fix. Nothing ever, ever gets delayed. If it needs to be fixed or done, case in point, it's done immediately. It's his brain has to that's what's on it that's what needs to be done so i'm sorry for the squeaking <laughs> okay i'm not exactly sure where i was in the video um i just stopped because <laughs> my husband's noises were not going away and so i went out and actually helped him a bit okay so i think i was getting to the beating part now i started beating on one side um you can see there's some beads going down here um, I did this little square corner right here. There's two little beads in this middle part here. And then um, you've got some beading up in here. And then, of course, the outer. There's a beads all around the outer border. It's the same color. It, these are the beads that go in between the Mood Indigo uh, Silk Lame Braid and the taupe. And I haven't gotten very far. I'm going to see if I can get up a little closer, see if it will focus. You can see some of the stitches around the outer edge. They look filled in from the beads. And then as you go further down, you can see where it looks like every other stitch is missing because there's no bead there. Sorry, I hit that microphone again. So yeah, the colors have some uh, uh, gold beads. You can't see but gold beads and then a light blue bead in in the in them and it's just so pretty I just I'm always amazed by every element I add it makes me wonder I mean there's so much detail how Martina came up and decided these beads need to be this color blue um, some of the beads I'm working with, there's two different color greens. One are glass cut, um, like, um, I, I don't know how, I forget what they're called exactly. But anyway, um, the edges, they're not smooth all the way around. They're kind of like, um, side, they have like sides, um, I guess. Uh, if you work with these beads, you know what I'm talking about. But it just... Uh, she's a, such an amazing designer um, and and these her pieces are just so worth stitching just for the experience to be exposed to new flosses to be exposed to new um, specialty stitches everything I I learned so much and I'm not even very far in this anyway that's it for today um, I will be working on this tonight I hope to finish the beading um, I have a while back, I mentioned I have to work on a a secret stitch piece. I haven't done that, and I need to get going on that. Um, I, I did one night of stitching, so I'm going to try uh, to stitch for like an hour every night on that and then stitch on something else. Um, so hopefully I'll have time to stitch on both of these. Tonight is blog post writing night, and that always takes me... A long time um, so I don't know how much stitching time we'll have um, but hopefully a little progress to show you tomorrow until then bye hello everyone today is Wednesday March 6th uh, I did not record yesterday I didn't have any stitching progress to show you on Tuesday um, I just didn't have time to stitch on Monday night uh, but last night I finished all of the beading on <clears throat> on this part of Poison Garden. And it 
it's just so beautiful. I put up a video last night on Instagram trying to show a close up and if I can get a decent video of this piece, I will insert that here. I'm gonna try and record a video of this piece close up to see if I can catch some of the sparkle. Um, and if I can't catch the sparkle, maybe just give you guys um, a better view of the detail. So the beads that I was working on with the petite silk lame braid right here in the corners. And that silk lame braid, you can just see little points of sparkle on it. In real life, it is constantly twinkling with sparkle. Um, there's some of the eyelets that I did. Um, in the corner are some woven stitches. I believe there is a road stitch in this metallic right here. I think that's a road stitch. I forgot some of the names. I know I've done several. There's some Algerian eyelets. I forgot what this one is. Um, it kind of makes a little hole in the center. That could be a different kind of roads, but I, I honestly don't remember. You can see a bunch of other little eyelets there. It's just so much detail in this piece. There's a lot of the one over one stitching. That's the only one over one I've done so far. Um, just so much of these colors, the purples, the blues, the teals, gorgeous. I know we're getting into some green colors soon. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, I'm not catching the sparkle, but at least this gets, gives you a better detail view of the whole piece. This piece is just so beautiful. Videos do not pick up the sparkle in it at all. Um, I, there's no way anyone who's ever worked on a Chatelaine will tell you there's no way to see, there's no way to understand how beautiful they are unless you see one in person. I never understood that until I started stitching it because really when, Every, every movement on this, it sparkles. The metallic sparkle, the beads sparkle. Um, it's just so gorgeous. And you can't, you can't see it on camera. And I, I wish so badly I could share that. I try, but even my husband, he watched the videos and he's like, it's not picking it up. <laughs> he, was, he was really kind of getting a little like irritated and um, because he, he wants, other people to see that too. It's just spectacular. I have discovered that I ended up, I, this is 21 days of progress right here. Um, I seem to work on this piece about, for about seven, seven days each time. I think the first time I put it away it was six days and the second time I picked it up, I worked on it for eight days. Um, I'm gonna put this away now. I wanted to, uh, start working on the corners for the rest of this week, but I'm really, um, I wasn't going to show you guys this and then decided since other people are kind of showing their work in the Arizona Stitch Shenanigans retreat group that I, I didn't have to keep it a secret. Um, but I'm not going to tell all the parts of it. My secret stitch, my secret stitch is for the Air, Arizona Stitch Shenanigans retreat McKenna is hosting. And this does not look like a me piece at all, probably. But this is, and it's so funny because I bought this pattern. I saw it on 123 Stitch. I bought this pattern probably, I want to say a month or two months before Michelle uh, Garrett, Stitchy Bendy, posted this on her, um, her auction page a couple weeks ago. And I was like, oh, I hope... I hope somebody else doesn't get it and have the same idea. But um, on her, I'm just gonna show it to you. It's Little House Needleworks. I need my glasses because I can't, I can't read the title. 
Traveling Stitcher. So this is the piece I am going to be making for the retreat. Sorry for the glare. But I am not putting it on this envelope because I didn't get the, the envelope. Um, I have a, another idea on customizing my own. And so when this is done, I am going to be creating my own sort of stitching, stitching envelope thing to take. I think that's a good idea, do you? I hope so. Um, I was sort of, because our it's we get to finish these. Basically, you stitch whatever you want and then you finish it. It has to be finished off. Um, and so that's my plan. I'm not going to tell you the kind of envelope, what I'm doing. I've got so many great ideas. Um, so I'm going to put that all together in a little package and I'm not going to say the extra stuff. I will later when it's done. Um, Anyway, I hope that seems like a good idea. I'm really nervous because, I don't know, I'm just nervous that it's not going to be good enough. Do any of you have that, that feeling with your stitch pieces for retreats? I've never gone to a retreat before, so now I'm just like, oh, I hope, I hope this is going to be okay. I don't know. The reason why I'm sharing it with you is because when I share my progress on things here, I tend to get more done. And I kept keeping the secret and then not working on it because I'm like, meh, I can't show it on my video, so whatever. And now it's March, and now I feel like I'm coming down to crunch time if I don't start working on this. I don't think it's going to take a long time to finish it, but I don't know. You guys know I underestimate my time. So this is what I've gotten done on it. Instead of the initials, I'm putting AZ on here. And then, as you can see in the pattern, the gear's in there. But I want to add Stitch Nanigans somewhere. And I don't know where that's going to be. So, um, I don't know. I may put it under that grass area where, oops, you can't see it, where the house is. I may do it in like a script or something. Script font. But this is where I am. And so I'm going to be spending the rest of this week while at home, not during travel, working on this piece. So we'll see how far I get. And now that I'm sharing it with you and sharing my progress, it'll probably um, be something I can make some decent progress on. And seriously, if you think that's a stupid idea, y'all better tell me now before I invest a bunch of time because I kind of have a backup plan that I don't think anyone would hate. I would sort of hate to give up this piece. I have to finish it, but because I love it. But if I know somebody else will love it, then I can pass it on into the universe and be happy that someone else will treasure it. You know what I mean? So I do have a backup plan. So honesty, not like cruel honesty, but honestly, if you think that's probably not a good thing for a retreat, please, please tell me now before I stitch that up. And then I'll just stitch it up and have it as my own travel like travel envelope thing okay um so i showed you poison garden that's what i worked on i showed you that um today is a travel day so i'm going to be working on this one and i'm going to be working on this blue wave today okay so mail i got this beautiful very cute draft card from my accountability partner and amazing floss tuber, Carrie and Stitches. If you don't watch Carrie and Stitches, you really need to. <laughs> she just finished Cross Stitch Nation and I love her floss conversion. It's amazing. And then of course her daughter Lottie, she calls herself Stitch a lot, has her own little segment and she is adorable and I don't know how old Lottie is because I haven't paid attention. I'm really sorry Lottie. Um, I want to say like 10 to 12 and if she's younger or older, I'm really sorry if I offended you. Um, I'm terrible with kids ages anymore. Now that my kids are grown, I don't pay attention to that stuff. I'll look at a kid and be like, I don't know, that's probably three and they're like five. Um, anyway, she, she showed her stitching because she stitches and she does a little diamond painting and she had the little red X up in the corner designating which side was up. And I told her, it took me forever to figure that out. She's already got it down. Anyway, this card. All right, 
Now, I honestly think Carrie has some intuition when she knows I'm going to fall off the, st the stitch from stash wagon because every single time that I fell off the wagon, like two, three days later, I get a card from her saying, you're doing great. For real. So like, because the US Postal Service takes some time, I'm thinking, Carrie, you need to like message me if you're gonna send another one. Like if you get the urge, just send me a message and say whatever you're thinking of doing, don't do it. Just stop. And then, and because <laughs> you seem to know. Um, by the way, I will fess up now a Prairie Moon pattern from um, Lisa. She's Miss Chief Stitch on um, uh, Instagram. Uh, did, I, did I say Lisa? I hope I said Lisa. My brain is just like, whatever. Um, anyway, uh, it's the Crip Club and it's Bite Me. And I didn't have that one and I was so excited. So I claimed it. Yeah, and then there was another one. I'm like, well, I already claimed one of them. Um, might as well claim another one. So I spent like $44 on charts. I did. Um, yeah. I don't feel bad though, because the Prairie Moon ones, um, I have like four of the Crip Clubs already. I did not have that one. And so I definitely wanted it to go with my Crip Club collection. But yeah, it's gonna take a chunk out of my Stitch from Sash budget. That's already in the deficit. I'm not upset about it. Um, it's an out of print part pattern <laughs> words. Um, and sometimes you have to make that decision. I know that I have, I want to get um, a finish done in March, the $25 finish and one in April. So I know that I, I can work my way out of this hole. I just need to get some finishes done. Okay, so speaking of Stitch from Stash, I got the mail yesterday and I got all my flosses from Margaret from the Little Thread Shop on eBay. Now, Margaret is amazing. Um, her, she sent a price list for her flosses right now and when I looked up the price that she charged me for these, I think she charged me $3 a skein. And right now, for 18 skeins, right now, she has on her price list, they're $3.50 for 1 to 20 skeins. And if you buy 20 or more, they're $3.25. So that was the January price list. So maybe they were on sale for March. But I got these for $3 a skein. And not only that, she sent me... Uh, clouds are going behind the sun, so... <laughs> the sun is going behind the clouds. Listen to my self-talk sometimes. I don't even know. She sent me these two dinky dye um, flosses as a gift. Um, Verbena and Bougainvillea. Did I say that right? I don't know flower names. And they are gorgeous flosses. I am super happy for these. This Verbena one is just so bright. I don't know how well it's coming across on your camera but or on your TV. But gorgeous. So I got two extras. Um, but these are, I've shown them before, so I'll just kind of grab them all by the tags and just throw them up here. Or maybe I should show them because um, some of you are new to my channel. And thank you so much for watching. For those of you who've been here for a while, thank you so much for sticking around. Okay, so Flowers of the Holy Night has, that's this pattern. It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine different flosses. Uh, some of the flosses you need two skeins of each and some you need uh, one, three, and then others are just one. So I'm gonna go find these. Um, gum leaves is the first one and that's this color here. Beautiful, beautiful light green. Next is bushfire. And this variegation is just amazing. Oh, so love those. Then, then we have Maddie's Rose. Beautiful. There's definitely some variegation in there. I don't know how well you can see it, but it's definitely there. Next is Acacia. Uh, 
Ocean Pines is a deep, beautiful green. Red Center. Pistachio. And I forgot one. I had a really hard time trying to find a good DMC and Victorian motto conversion for this that I liked, that I had. Uh, the one I forgot was Pindy. This is a beautiful green. They're all beautiful. And then Heartthrob. This is a gorgeous red. Gorgeous red. Jen Spinneroni Stitcher and I are ready to start. Now that I got my flosses, she's got her Q snap. We are starting on Sunday, y'all. Yes, super excited about that. So that's happening. Um, and I have to remember to thank Margaret for the gift of the two extra dinky dive silks. Um, that is all I have today. This ended up being a long segment. I didn't mean for that uh, to happen as per usual. Um, so I will check in with you tomorrow. We will see how far I get on um, the Seize the Day stitch along. Uh, hopefully I can get this whole wave done. I'm gonna have trouble counting. I may just say forget it and start working up here, but I'd really like to get that clue one done all at the same time. Uh, with that, I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hello everyone. Today is Thursday, March 7th. Um, I did not get as much stitching done as I hope last night or yesterday on our way out. Uh, I really, I really wanted to, and I got car sick. Um, I used to get car sick a lot, uh, mostly in fine stitching in the car, but every now and then it just gets me. And once I get queasy and car sick, that's it. Uh, we were probably on the road for about 40 minutes. Maybe, I'm going to say just a touch longer because we actually made it to needles. So probably 50-ish minutes an hour at the most and then I was just like no uh, my husband said I wasn't really paying attention he said it was a bit windy so it could have rocked the car a little more it's pretty common for us to get wind gusts here all the time um, windy days uh, we all love the days where it's not windy but our wind can be anywhere from 15 to 30 miles an hour um, and yeah so when I, when I went to do Kelly's graduation pictures we both were praying that the Saturday I went to take those, it would be uh, not a windy day. And it was like four miles an hour and we were thrilled. Um, so anyway, yeah, I think that could have been it. I did get some done, but I don't think you'll be able to see it because of the light, maybe a little. But I stitched this white from here over. Um, and, and this is all the white on this part of the wave. And I got all that done. I. I wanted to keep going. I wanted to actually start stitching the blue in here before I went all the way across this way and just couldn't do it. So I'm actually going to, I really was hoping to get this clue finished with my second travel day. And because I didn't, I'm actually going to work on that tonight. Um, I know I said I was going to work on my um, Arizona Stitch Nanigans piece and I, I really want to get this done so that uh, tomorrow's another travel day. My fingers are crossed that um, I won't get sick and I will be able to get a really good start on clue number two. Uh, so that's where I am with that. That was all the stitching I did. Um, I did get some items in the mail. Uh, the first off was, um, I, I mention this often, but I write a To Do Tuesday blog post uh, on my blog. My blog really started off as a quilting blog and as a crafter I have really I've not been quilting for a long time. A lot of that has been because I've been sewing so many project bags and if I wasn't in a place where I needed to sew those right now I would be back to quilting. Um, anyway people link up to this blog post that I write and one of the links was from um, 
Susan of Quilt Fabrication. And so whenever anybody links up, I of course go over to their blog and, and try to write a comment. Uh, some weeks I just get so busy I, I don't, but I've really been trying to make an effort this week and last week to comment on other people's posts when they link up. So I went, read her post, commented on it, and right under the comments, she had thumbnails of products in her Etsy shop. And I saw two quilts, but they're smaller size quilt. Uh, one's a wall hanging quilt and one's a table runner. And the <laughs> my printer ink started to go bad. Uh, bad. So I bought this one. Winter feed. I bought the pattern as a PDF. You can see it's approximately 32 to 35 inch wall hanging quilt. There's no way I was not buying this pattern. But then I saw she had a quilt kit. So I bought the kit. And these are all the fabrics in it to make it. Normally I would go through uh, my own stash because obviously ha I have some, but because of the blacks, I don't have a lot of black fabrics. And I didn't want to try to fuss with trying to find black um, blenders. And then the I've got a few grays. Uh, I loved her fabrics that she picked out. You can see my, I think I mentioned it, my printer's running out of ink, so uh, over in here. So uh, the colors aren't right, and I really wish this would focus better, but anyway, I got so excited when I saw this and thought, I really want to quilt again. I really want to make a quilt. Uh, now, I have done, never done applique before, and these birds are applique. Um, I didn't read to see if the snowbank is applique, um, but I made a comment on her blog about applique and she said, this is the easy way. So I was like, yeah, yeah let's do it. Now this ink thing bothers me. So as soon as I change the cartridge, I'm printing this out again. Uh, but this one is Patriotic Wave. And really, this isn't really hard. I don't, you don't really need a pattern to be able to do this. But I, I wanted to go by a pattern because of the applique stars. And I don't applique. I don't know how to do that. So I decided to go ahead and get this. And this was $7.95 also. Um, and so, of course, I also want to pay someone for their inspiration, their idea. She created that pattern, uh, put the work into it. And for $7.95, um, hello, yes, I'm going to support that. So thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, I got that in today. All right, now the other thing I got in, if you remember when I was talking about this quilt market, I only gave myself a limit of buying one thing. I ended up buying two, confession. Stitcher, stitch from stash, confession time. Yeah, uh, y'all, when I fall off the wagon, I fall hard. I'm desperately climbing back on. Don't worry, I'm going to really work hard to um, work this off. But... Uh, allergies y'all I'm sorry when I first saw market stuff the very first pattern that I fell in love with and was like that's my market pattern was Maria Cassin 1822 from Lucy Bean uh, that's Becky Nolan um, uh, Trish of 3L Threads had posted in her Facebook group is there anything in particular you want me to go find get whatever when I'm at market and I commented this pattern. Well, then you all know I changed my mind and pre-ordered um, um, A Savior's Praise, Shakespeare's Peddler, said it this time, uh, through Julie of Gulf Coast Stitches. Well, when Trisha came back, uh, I didn't know if she saw the comment or not. And I thought, if she didn't see it, no big deal. I changed my mind. But she did see it. She messaged me and she said, hey, I got that pattern. Do you still want it? And I was like, heck yeah. Took me like all of 0 0.025 seconds to be like, yeah. Um, and of course, because I asked her and she went and bought it, um, I'm, when you do that with your peoples, you need to follow through, right? So I had in the back of my mind, I didn't tell you guys, but because I had done that, I had in the back of my mind, this was likely the scenario to happen. And it did, and I'm not even mad about it because this really was my number two favorite chart. So I just got it earlier, and it's because I asked a shop owner, hey, you see that one? That's the one I want. And she saw it and went, that's the one Christine wants, and she got it. So this is Maria Ka Kassin, Kassin? I, I don't know how to say that. 
I really need to ask. 1822, I love this so much. Oh, please focus. See if I get any closer. Yep. If I am right, oh, teach my heart, still in the right to stay. If I am wrong, thy grace impart to find a better way. Really love everything about this. Now, the funny thing is I pulled this out and I saw this. And I'm looking at the threads and at the top, no, at the bottom, it tells me it's Stitch on 40 Count Legacy by Picture This Plus. I'm like, perfect. Which flosses are those? And I'm reading the names and I'm like, I should know who these are. Are these Gast? Are they Classic Colorworks? I know them. It was not coming to mind. And I'm like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna figure this out? Is on the back, the gentle arts. <laughs> so yeah, I'm laughing at myself. Such a goofball. Uh, anyway, this is a great, great pattern. Super happy uh, with it and super happy I got it. Big thanks to Trish and Trish even wrote a really nice note. Now this pattern cost me uh, $14 and $3 shipping and she thanked me. Thank you for choosing to support my shop. It means so much. Y'all, when we support these small businesses, it means everything to them. And so I was really excited and happy to be able to do that. Um, and happy that, um, yeah, Trish read my comment. She was like, Christine wanted that. Christine got it. Okay, I also received in the mail a gift from our very own Patience Price. Uh, Patience is Stitching 304. She comments on our videos all the time. She comments on Instagram. She is a sweetheart. I adore her to pieces. And she um, sent me this Americana sampler. And I love it. I've never seen this before. I can't wait to stitch it. She sent me the sweetest note with it. And I felt so bad reading the note. Um, I said it over there. Um, this is one of those pieces that for her, you know, you know, when you start one, everything goes wrong. You're ripping out stuff. It's just not working for you. You really want to stitch it. But by the time you're trying to get it working, it's just like not cooperating. And you're like, forget this. Um, she had that trouble and she's like, I just sent it on to you. So patience, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I love this. Um, I'm going to uh, kit this up when I'm done and get it ready to start sometime. I'm hoping next year. Okay, I have two. I haven't done shout outs for a while. I'll mention people. Um, I've been trying really hard to watch Flosstube and keep up with people. I think I told you before January, I wiped my entire list out. Well, I realize I'm halfway through February. I'm, if I haven't watched January, I wiped all those out. I've got like 23 videos in. Everyone who pops up goes into watch later and I'm just trying to watch them. I'm trying to catch up. I'm just now watching Michelle Bendy's video from Saturday. So I'm back on Saturday right now. So, and I'm trying to really hard to go back and leave comments when I'm listening. And I'm not listening, like I'm not hanging on to every word. It's while I'm crafting, I'm listening uh, to the floss tube is playing in the background. So it's kind of like I'm hanging out with someone all day, but I'm doing my usual Christine, like when someone's talking and you're going, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. That, that's sort of what I'm doing in my head. <laughs> I'm not like watching everything. Um, but anyway, there were two floss tubers I, I really made sure to watch this week because they're new to me. Um, actually, one is new to floss tube, and that is Colette. The highway stitcher. Um, I stumbled across her floss tube because Audrey posted that she has started a floss tube. Now I met Colette at Acorns and Threads when I went up there for the summer for their stitchy day and meeting her was like meeting someone that you've known your whole life. Um, and I've said this before like I feel like we've been friends for 1500 years. So when she put her floss tube up um, I was super excited to get to it and I finally just got to it yesterday. Um, and so if you haven't seen Colette's videos, um, I would highly recommend that you go watch them. Colette is just an amazing person. She does beautiful lace work and she talks about that too. Um, she travels and she gets to go around from Utah to Southern California. Uh, she's got a house in Oregon 
And so I am super excited to get to see Colette again. If I remember correctly, I think she's going to stitch shenanigans. Um, and, and if that's the case, I'm just super excited to see her. She's just an amazing person. The other stitcher I want to call out is not new to floss tube. She's got over 5,000 viewers on her Russian channel. It's Julia. And I think I said it right. Her on, on this next floss tube and next, her second floss tube. Um, and on Instagram, she is Armada with two D's. A-R-M-A-D-D-A. -A -A. Um, her, she has a bunch of videos in Russian, but she was encouraged to do some in English as well. And so she does a great job. She's been living in Ireland for like, I think she said 12 or 13 years. Y'all, you got to go see her second video. Her first one is get to know your needle worker tag. Um, and Colette does one of those too. But Julia's second video is full of the most beautiful eye candy you've ever seen for accessories for cross stitch. I am not even kidding. She has got a Clay by Kim collection that is to die for. Um, my favorite line probably from that is the, when she says, I don't buy fobs for my scissors. I buy scissors for my fobs. She has an amazing, beautiful fob collection. Um, she's just gorgeous and she's working on some amazing pieces. Both of them, I've only seen the first two videos they've done and they both just put out a third. So I would highly encourage you to go check them out. Um, Julie is great. She has a great sense of humor. She apologizes, I think, a few times for her English. I, her English is perfect. She speaks better English than me. She obviously has a better command of the, the words she needs to use because I can't even find those words sometimes. So I'm going to leave you with that today. Now, I have pre-recorded a video for March 8th tomorrow and it's a very special video for a special viewer. Um, I am going to be on the road so I will not have time to record uh, so I'm glad I got this recorded. So I will see you on Saturday but I hope you enjoy my little video for tomorrow for Friday. Until Saturday, bye. Today is Friday March 8th and you may be wondering why I have birthday decorations up and a birthday hat on. It's because today is Sharon's 50th anniversary. Sharon is from the UK and Sharon, I just want to wish you a very happy birthday today. I know you'll be seeing this late um, on Sunday, a couple days after your birthday, but just know that I hope you had an amazing day um, and hey, 50, I'm excited to get there. I'm only a few years away. I'm super excited to make it to the big 5-0. I feel like once you make it there, like you are a woman and then like nobody should ever question you after that, right? Like you're 50. You're 50. So enjoy your day. I hope you have a wonderful birthday. Uh, and that's it. Bye. Hello. Today is Saturday, March 9th, and you're probably wondering why I'm wearing the birthday hat again. Well, when I recorded Sharon's birthday, I can't believe I said anniversary. Uh, when I recorded her birthday video, it was a couple weeks ago, a week and a half or so, and I completely forgot that my BFF's birthday was the very next day. Or I would have recorded a video then for her today. I had already taken down all my decorations and everything, so I got my birthday hat out. I'm not going to wear it this whole day because my hair is not puffy today, so it's not holding up the hat well. But happy birthday, Sarah. Um, I need to send you a message, but yay, it's your birthday. I hope you get all the stitchy things. I already know one of the things you got for your birthday. I'm super excited for you to get that and show everyone because, y'all, it's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to take this off because I could feel it starting to fall down. All right, so yesterday was a travel day. Um, I am surprised I got anything done that I did, mainly because um, yesterday was considered one of our windy days. Um, and the entire trip there, we had a huge headwind. I just looked up the wind um, from yesterday and the highest gust was 50 miles an hour average gust across the desert was about 41 miles per hour um, so When when you're going across I-40 across the desert anyone who's done this, you know 
Um, it just pushes you all over the road. The truck's all over the road. You have to be really careful. Motorhomes get going across that. <laughs> Guaranteed every time. If, if you haven't driven across windy areas in your motorhome, uh, a lot of people are tourists and they rent the RVs. You got to stay away from those people. Lord, y'all just don't know what they're doing. Anyway, um, when they get going across the desert, their awnings, the wind will catch their awnings and <laughs> pull them out. And so then you see them stuck on the side of the road. They're trying to pull their awnings back in. My husband has been RVing for over 30 years. Um, so he, he definitely knows on windy days like today, you got to stop early in the afternoon. You got to be done. Uh, and you can't be driving across deserts like that because you're going to end up on the side of the road waiting for the wind to die down, which it won't do until nighttime. Yeah, so anyway, what that meant for me is a really jerky, rocky trip. And I, I was determined to stitch as much as possible on Seize the Day. And I was just ignoring all of it. I was just focused. I actually brought my K's Creation Z-Frame lap stand so I could use the lap stand. Sorry, I'm, I'm extra fidgety today. And I got a bit done. Um, my stitches, they look bad. And I got to the point where I was like, you know what, it's going to be fine. Nobody's even going to be examining this up close. I'm not putting it in the fair or, you know, anything like that. So here we go. Um, last night or yesterday, I stitched all this, had to unstitch it because I added an extra row and then restitched it. Um, got the kite done, uh, did this bow did the center line and realized I put the center line over one too far. So instead of unstitching all this, cause I was not going to keep unstitching in this jerky, rocky car driving 80 miles an hour down the highway. No, I just extended the bow. So if the bow looks funky, that's why. Um, and then filled this in and then I did the outline of the sun. I got the yellow done to just above his eyes by the time we got home. So last night after we got home, it was probably, I want to say 8.30. Um, I stitched in the rest of the yellow, filled in his little face and added the cloud. And it took, I'm going to say like eight and a half hours just to stitch this. And that just seems awfully slow for me. I guess there's a lot of stitch in there. I don't know. It just, I was, I was happy to get this far, but I was hoping to get to the banner. Um, and so all that's left is the Seize the Day banner and there's a plane. And I don't know if I'm going to work on that banner and try to get the banner done before we go to pick up Kelly after spring break. Sorry, my eyes are watering. Windy days just make the pollen so much worse. Um, and so this eye is just like going to cry all day, I guess. I don't know. Um... So I don't, I don't know. I, I'm really not trying to give up stitchy time here at the house on this piece, but I need to, to catch up and to get this clue finished. It's not like I'm behind. I have till the 25th for the third. I keep calling them clues, but they're parts before the third part comes out. But I'd still really like to get that banner done right here so that the next trip I can, I can do the plane on. So that's good. I got pretty far. Funny, funny side note is this is the, I keep forgetting to show this, Caterpillar Cross Stitch Sees the Day. Um, I can't show the pattern because all the pattern is is the actual chart. Um, we got in the car yesterday and I'm looking all over for the pattern for part two. I could have swore I printed it out, swore I put it in the bag, couldn't find it in the bag with all my papers. There's no papers in this bag now, by the way. This is the bag Vicky stitching, uh, stitching button made me. Love it. Put on your big girl panties. Boy, did I ever yesterday with this piece and that wind. Um, anyway, pull all the papers out. Can't find the pattern. Thankfully, I still had it in my email on my phone. So I just downloaded the PDF to my phone and I stitched off that, which is really hard when you've got this lap stand, you're working on the pattern, flosses are falling all over, and there's wind gusts up to 50 miles an hour outside your car. But I did it. I persevered. Get home. 
looking all over for the pattern. Decide to look in the bag again. It was there. It was just folded up in half down in the bottom. <sighs> anyway, so that was really annoying because it was really annoying to stitch off my thumb. Uh, what I got in the mail yesterday was um, the, the purchase I made from Lisa, Miss Chief Stitch. Stitch, I love Lisa. Just love her. Um, anyway, I got my Prairie Moon Bite Night pattern in. Love this guy. I love her. I love the waitress. I mean, I love him too, but I love the waitress. Bloody Mary's a free after sunset. Yeah, I just, I just love them. Um, and so when I get those done, I think I'm going to have them on a wall over here, like all of them in the set framed in just plain black square frames and hanging on the wall. Uh, I really love it. I'm still trying to find the um, fabric flare fabric in smoke blue. Um, I don't think he makes that one anymore. And it's the perfect background for all of those. So if I can, I uh, can, I don't know, try to contact him or uh, Cindy Sorley is the one who, he distributes his fabric flare fabrics elsewhere. Gvork, I think that's how you say his name. Um, she's the main distributor um, and she gets some of the specialer fabrics, you know, like the preamble fabric and stuff. But I asked her a couple times and she never got back to me if he's still going to print that one. Anyway, and then the other pattern I got, I love this one so much. Trick or Treat. It's from Nessie Lynn. Look at how cute that is, though. Look at that little jack-o'-lantern and the N as um, the bones. Oh, I had that. I had it all. I saw it focus, and then it went away. So, yeah, those are the ones I admitted to the other day. Okay, so what's going to happen this weekend? All right, so today I'm going to spend probably a big chunk of the day editing all these videos together. Um, and then yesterday I actually, before we took Callie, I loaded up my fabric for flowers of the holy night. I'm all ready to go. Okay. So I've got all my flosses. I prepped them yesterday. Normally I've talked a lot about, I like to put my flosses on a floss cards. You know, I make my own, I was going to show you one like this. I just make my own. I use the acid-free comic book boards, um, but I decided because these are silks, I did not want to damage them. I didn't want any sort of drag on them from the paper. So I just, um, I had inherited being given these sort of bags, uh, just these bags, they didn't have holes in them, um, along with a bunch of like DMC labeling stuff and bobbins. And so I punched holes in them last night I took out some of my old planner stickers and I just wrote the name and symbols and put them on a little ring. So yeah, that'll work out. And I already um, split the skeins, you know, unwound them, cut them off the tags. Yes, I cut them. I did not mess with trying to untie a dinky dye knot. I just cut that off untwisted them and then clip both ends because I like my strands about when I'm um, when I'm working with overdyes I like them about I don't know that long like a foot long no nah, maybe 10 inches sorry I dropped something anyway in case you're wondering what the heck I'm talking about it's the flowers of the holy night pattern now um some of you may remember or not I also have all the beads Okay, so this pattern, in case you don't remember, this is how Jen Spooneroonie Stitcher and I really sort of started our friendship. Um, I was doing an Instagram live video. Every time I bring this up, she apologizes, and I swear it's the best thing that ever happened to me, so I really wish she would stop saying, I'm sorry, Jen, stop saying that. Um, I was doing an Instagram live video, and I was, as in this video, just flighty and all over the place and trying to talk about something, but going 500 different directions, chasing 5 million rabbits. And that woman asked me, have you seen Dina half stitch cross stitch working on flowers of the holy night? Well, I had in Dina's progress, Dina's flowers of the holy night is amazing. And so every time Dina shows that we message each other, uh, actually, I don't think we have the last couple, but it's like, Dina's working on Flowers of the Holy Night again. 
We both, both love it. So we both ended up with the patterns and we're both ready to start. Um, and I'm super excited about this. So this, this pattern means a lot to me. Um, not just because one, it's gorgeous Two, I love it every time Dina brings hers out to work on, but mainly the numero uno, I don't know why I just remembered those. The, the main reason I love this pattern is because that's what sparked the friendship between Jen and I. Um, and I just, I think it's a fantastic pattern. I hope we're both going to have so much fun stitching it. We're probably going to message each other a lot uh, and be like, I screwed up or whatever. I'll probably be messaging her that more than anything. Um, but yeah, we're starting that on Sunday and I don't know how we're going to hashtag it or anything. I don't think we have a specific thing other than we're just starting it on Sunday. And so that's my plan. Um, so that's it for today. I'm going to wrap up this weekly video. Um, I thank you all so much for sticking with me, um, and watching my channel, uh, watching my videos every week for all of those of you who come back and just kind of see what's going on in my life, see what's happening with my stitching. I really appreciate that so much. And well, yeah, anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. If you're new to my channel, thank you for bearing through my video, watching all the way to the end if you made it here. Um, and I hope you'll come back uh, and see what I get up to next week with Flowers of the Holy Night, me and Jen. Uh, check Jen out. She's not a floss tuber. She is big in the floss tube community in my mind. Um, as far as participating, leaving comments, um, she is well known up at Keepsakes. Pam and Steph know her. Um, lots of people know Jen. She's always leaving the best comments on our videos, but she is active on Instagram. So if you uh, want to follow her and see her progress on Flowers of the Holy Night, um, you can find her there as Spooner Rooney underscore Stitcher. Uh, and she may have her account sent to private. So if you don't have stitching stuff or whatever to show on your profile, she may not accept you. I don't know. That's I. Why am I speaking for Jen? Jen, I'm sorry. Uh, so yeah. Um, until next week, don't forget y'all stitch all the things. Bye.